Good morning once again. Welcome to BC315, the course on life skills. So today we are going to look at the chapter on creativity and being innovative and you know the critical thinking. I'm not too sure we will touch upon the critical thinking, but in today's class we will look into creativity and being innovative. So even before we could begin with our session, let's pray. So um this is something that I would like to uh, uh, take a scripture passage on even before we could pray. Uh, request you all to please turn to Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. Okay, verse 1 to 11. I will read it for all of us. It says that the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Repeat the scripture, Exodus 31. Verse 1 to 11. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezaliel, son of Ur, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works to work in gold and silver and bronze, in cutting jewels for setting and carving wood, and to work in all manner of workmanship. And I indeed, I am appointed with him, Eholia, the son of Ahisamak, of the tribe of Dan, and I have put wisdom in the hearts of all the gifted artisans, that they may make all that I have commanded you. The tabernacle of meeting, the ark of the testimony, and the mercy seat that is on it, and all the furniture of the tabernacle, the table and its utensils, the pure gold lampstand with all its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, with all its utensils and the labor and its base, the garments of ministry, the holy garments for Aaron the priest and the garments of his sons to minister as priests, and the anointing oil and sweet incense for the holy place. According to all that I have commanded you, they shall do. So let me learn from the scripture. What is your talk was about the creativity? We see that God, the source of creativity, imparting his creativity to people. I think we all know that our God is a God who is not partial. A God imparts creativity to each of us. So there's no reason for each of us to say that we lack in creative or we are not creative because the source of creativity is God. And we have this creative God in us. So the God who's dwelling in us will make each of us creative. So what we need to do, all we have to do is tap into that resource. We need to tap into that resource to get the access of creativity. So let's pray and tap and ask God, God, as we are here, as we are here, Lord, we surrender ourselves into your hand. Father God, we commit ourselves, each of us in our class, into your hand. And also the students will be logging in later through e-learning into your hand. Lord, we pray that as we go through the session of creativity, being innovative, Lord, we pray that you created each of us in your image, in your likeness. Lord, we pray that you are the God who's created, Lord. You are the source of all creativity, your Father. Lord, in your in your omniscient power, in your, um, in your all creativity, Lord, you created the earth, you created the planets, you created the plants and all the living creatures of this earth, Lord. 
Father, and your word says that you created everything and you said it is good. Lord, you also created man in your own likeness, in your own image, your Father. You imparted your breath into him so that we may live, we may think, we may reason, we may analyze. Lord, I pray and I thank you that you have imparted your creativity into each of us, our Lord. That there is no lack in us, our Father. Father, as we look up to you, the source of all creativity, Lord, we pray that you will activate the creativeness that you have imparted to each of us, Lord, with your wisdom, with your knowledge and understanding. Father, we pray that each of us will be creative in our own area, in our own skill that you have given us, Lord. Father, we pray that, Lord, every area that we are serving you and we pray that we will be creative, will be innovative for the expansion of your kingdom, for the expansion, for all your glory and honor, oh Father. Just the way that you blessed Bezalian. The same way, Lord, you have blessed each of us, Lord. You have blessed us, you have increased us in your wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for doing greater work in and through us, Lord. You desire it, oh Father. You desire to, um, to work and move in and through us, Lord. Father, we thank you. We thank you that the greater God, greater God, the creative God is indwelling in each of us, oh Father, to make us more like you. Father, we pray that each of us, Lord, you will help us to humble ourselves and depend on you, depend on your wisdom, depend on your knowledge, on your understanding, O oh Father, that we may not lean on, on, uh, on our understanding, O oh Lord, or on our ability, O oh Father. Lord, we also will not look down upon ourselves, O oh Lord, but then, Lord, we will depend on you, who is the author and creator, God, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for moving in and through us. Thank you that, that you're leading us, you're guiding us, and you're strengthening us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So we know that God is a creative God, isn't it? It's so amazing to read about him that, you know, he can impart his wisdom, his understanding, his knowledge by, you know, even designing the tabernacle. And when we read through this Exodus chapter 31, verse 1 to 11, that God is so particular about each and everything. And here there is no technology where the people can research or be innovative, but God imparts his wisdom into them. He gives them the understanding, he gives them the knowledge out of which they design everything perfectly in the way God wanted it to be. So you and I today, uh, having so much of resources and tools around us and our access, how much more creative you and I could be. Not talking about depending on our own strength and ability, definitely not, but then when we depend on God, on his ability, on his wisdom, and the resources that has been made available to you and me, how much more creative each of us will be in the area of ministry or the workplace that God has assigned each of us to be. So there is no reason for us not to be creative. There is no reason for us not to be innovative, nor look down upon us. There is no reason. It's God would say that He has created us and He has created us to be created, to be like Him. Okay, with that, let's look into our subject. So, there's no problem in our creativity because creativity is something that is within us. We all are creative and we need to believe that we are creative. We are innovative. The minute you believe, you see, we flow with creativity. There's something, a very nice gift that God has given us is the imagination. Imagination is free, of course, isn't it? We can think, we can imagine. All of us, all of us have this power of imagination that God has given us. 
For example, if I say, uh, you know, a big mountain near an ocean. Now, all of us have this creativity of imagination. Now, all of us uh, can imagine a big ocean and there's a majestic mountain, isn't it? Though we would not have visited such place, but definitely we all can imagine. So as our words have been spoken, our creativity has started in our mind. Same way, every idea, every task that is assigned to us, we are creative and we need to believe in that. Believe that God has gifted us with creativity. We are creative, we are innovative. So creativity and innovation is um, you know, something that is balanced between both. And how do we fuel creative, creativity within us? By allowing us to flow in it, by allowing us to be creative. So let's look at, let me share the slide first. Uh, prepare a simple slide uh, with certain examples that we could exercise and know that and believe that we are creative. Okay. We are your creative critical thinking. In today's class, we will only be covering on creativity. So, okay, the slide is not changing. Let me see. Okay, is it changing now? Yeah. So, what is creativity? Creativity is the ability to make something new using our imagination or the original ideas. It can be a picture, a book, a song, a new idea. So this is creativity, where we each of us have this ability to make something new. How? By using the imagination. So we all can imagine any word that has been released, we can, the minute we say uh, a picture, a book, uh, or a song, or a new idea, we all can imagine what it is. So now when we say creative thinking, yes, as we all read the definition, it is the ability to think differently and also we see a problem or a challenge from a new angle or a new perspective. Why? In order that we can solve it. So creativity allows us to find a new solution, a new answer, a new way of solving that problem. So uh, an effective way of solving a problem. Sometimes uh, we may have tried everything and it's not working. So we look a little different. So we think differently. We try to solve that problem uh, in a creative way. So how we may uh, we may think is there uh, is there a different way that we could solve the problem for a new solution or to see if the problem uh, needs a new solution and we think in a creative manner. So we want to just look at a few pictures here that I would like to show and see uh, the different aspects of that picture. Okay, just give me a minute while I uh, share those pictures and see. Uh, your creative uh, thinking and what is that we each of us uh, have different side to look into a picture. So what is that we see in this picture? All of us can see, right? What is that we can see in this picture? You all can unmute and answer. What is that we see in this picture? Chat is on. Let me see if somebody is applying on the chat. Or Mangi, sorry, I didn't hear you. So you see a human human's face. You see a human's face. Yeah, you're right. 
Anyone else? Oh, everyone sees a face. Siddhant, Bishik sees a face. Afni sees a face. Kung. Oh, Kung got to the point. She can see a face and a word called liar. Okay. So, Kung, how did you see that? Even Avni have noticed it. So, how did you notice that? Let me quickly change so that all of us can see what Kung and Avni can see. See, this is a little tilted work. Still, you can see the face and you can see the word. Yeah, you can see the word clearly. You got it? So, uh, now, because we know the word, okay, now we know the word, now we are all able to see the word clearly, isn't it? At the same time, are we able to see the face even when in this uh, tilted picture? We are able to, isn't it? Why? Because we have seen the perspective of both sides. So, every problem has different sides. We need to be creative to see the problem in different angles so that we can come up with a solution. The solution do not have to be in a full day model. We can also be innovative. We can be creative in what way we can do. So it's not about the things around us that we can be creative and innovative, but just by you know handling the problem. Like last class, we studied about conflicts. What can the various way of conflicts that we may face can handle? How? What are the different ways that we can handle conflicts? We looked upon. So this class, we're looking at the creativity. The minute if we say creative, we talk about creativity, we think about or we imagine a uh, uh, man, uh, uh, a sculpture, okay, a man sculpting a, a rock or a stone into an image, and we think that's the creativity, isn't it? Where a simple stone is sculpted, has been chiseled, a form a beautiful image or a statue. Uh, we admire that sculpture. We admire the work of that person, isn't it? So we think that's the creativity. Then creativity is just not in uh, uh, creating things. It's also in the way we handle ourselves, the way we handle others, the way we address the problem. That's the creativity. That means a skill. This skill can be developed. It is not around science, just that we need to be innovative. We need to keep doing what we are doing until and unless uh, we analyze, we reason out, we come up with a solution and know that, um, you know, God has given us this creativity. God has given us this skill that we can handle it. So how do we, how do we analyze that? How do we um, realize that we have this creative skill within us? Nothing but in the process. We need to keep continuously doing what we are doing. The minute we try doing what we're doing in different ways, we realize that we are creative. One of the way is we should not keep doing the things monotonously. You know, our mind gets so used to it that you don't have to think. For example, if you are uh, driving from your home to college, home to workplace, home to uh, your ministry, your church, the same route, you're taking the same route day by day, week, weeks past, month past, year past, you're taking the same route. Now, I'm sure most of you all will agree with me. As you're taking the same route, your mind is thinking of n number of things, many things at the same time. You don't have to pay attention when you need to take left, right. You just reach your destination. You just reach your destination. And in the way, you have uh, thought or discussed in your mind, or uh, you know, you have thought so many things in the process of reaching your destination. Have you come across you were not being cautious, I need to take left, I need to take right. Uh, you know, your mind just knows. You have just passed through, reached the route, your destination. Have anyone come across this? That you don't have to think which left you have to take, which right you have to take. But, you know, you reach your destination. At the same time, you have thought many things. 
many things that can be related to your work, personal life, ministry, it can be anything. Your mind was so busy thinking of all these things and you reached your destination. Anyone? Have you come have you come across this situation? Have you personally faced this? No one. So you don't drive. Ma'am, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Okay. Okay. See. If you're driving, if you're driving from point A to point B, week after week, first time when you drive, you're very conscious about the path that you take, the route that you take which left you need to take, which right you need to take to reach your destination. But if you're going through the same route, day after day or week after week, month past, then you don't have to think, are you taking the route correctly? Because now this route has become very familiar to your mind. The route has become very familiar to your mind. So you know inside your mind. Okay, but now because the root has become familiar to our mind, now our mind starts, uh, you know, start uh, starts to think various things. It can be about a personal life, ministry, workplace, kids, many things. But you're able to take the route correctly and reach your destination without even paying much attention to the route. Did you understand? Did you get me right? Ma'am? Yes. Yes, Roman. I don't drive, but I can uh, share an experience. Yes, please. How I have learned the skill of, I like uh, knitting. So even if uh, I'm knitting a pattern and suddenly there is low power, I can keep on knitting even without seeing because my mind knows the pattern, how to do it. So I can, I can share that. Uh, Yes, thanks. thanks. Thanks, Rupa, for sharing it. Yes, that's another example. Yes. Anyone else have experienced? Yes, Brother Christopher, please, you can unmute. Uh, yes, Pastor, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes, uh, so for, for me, I think, um, I mean, I drive um, uh, in, in Bangalore, and, um, you know, I used to when I look elsewhere, um, uh, and I look abroad, I have you know the, the roads and everything else, and the traffic, everything was very orderly. And uh, the, what I have found is that even if the even if the route is you know uh, familiar, uh, I still have to consciously um, ensure that I keep uh, you know uh, uh, in in um, I'm very conscious of all the other things that are happening when I'm driving because there's Bangalore traffic is um, not um, uh, very uh, orderly. The roads are in, in bad condition. And uh, there are so many things that are happening, um, uh, you know, with regards to, uh, you know, people, you know, cutting in, cutting out. So uh, I think the experience of driving is for me is not a not a good example because i uh, i'm still very very I, i'm not able, i don't think of other things i have to really focus on uh, on driving even if the route is familiar yeah that's that's what i wanted to say thank you thank you brother christopher for sharing your point of view anyone else would like to add Okay, what I what I wanted to actually share is like other than the traffic and uh, you know the new way somebody cutting us. Yes, we need to pay much attention in that area. But what I meant to say is, if there's no such problem, if you're monotonously taking the same route, what I meant to say is how our mind works. Our mind gets familiar to what Sister Rupa was sharing. That if she's knitting and there's a parka, still she can continue to knit because she a mind has become very familiar to that method. 
So it need not be only knitting. We can also apply this to keyboard. Your finger exactly the way you train, your finger goes to the right key to the right note, even without we seeing the keypad. For example, it comes even to our typing. The way we get used to our typing, for example, if those who have finished the course on typewriting, the seniors, most of the seniors here in our class, if you have gone, uh, uh, gone to a course on typewriting, uh, your, your fingers are used to the key. So you don't have to actually look at the keys on your keyboard and move your finger. It goes exactly A, S, D, F, L, K, J. It just goes, the right fingers goes to the right key because our mind is trained to access it. So when it becomes familiar, you don't have to look into it. It, it takes automatically. The same way, our mind gets familiar in certain areas, certain areas at our work, it can be in our ministry, in our workplace. So there is a way, this is what the, some of the psychiatrists say, that to keep our mind active and creative, we need to take a different route every day or just change the route every two days so that we tend to keep our mind active, creative. If you see a, a mind of a little child, it won't rest in one place because the mind is trying to learn new things. You see the uh, a child being very proactive, uh, uh, running everywhere, asking hundreds of questions. Why? The mind wants to realize, explore, and learn new things. So as we grow, when the familiarity hits, we tend to slow down. We tend not to use the mind. But one thing we need to know is we should not uh, say that, you know, uh, aging, we're getting aged. So we we are, uh, uh, you know, we are unable to think or we are not being so creative. No, it is the exercise that we give to our mind. We need to constantly keep learning, keep doing new things so that our mind is active. Keep looking at new things, keep looking at different aspects, catch up for the time, the season, grow with the technology. So we are getting ourselves updated and upgraded. I hope the class got what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> Did we get what I'm trying to say? Okay, I see the chat, the comment, yes. Okay, let's look at the other image. Give me a minute, please. I have another image. Okay, the image is going down. Okay. So we get so the image up next this this. So what do we look at in this image? What do you see in this image? Ma'am, ma it gives a view of front as well as a side view of the same person. Yes. Front, that is the left side of the face. And the side view of the front portion of the face, that is the right side of the person's face. At the right edge, if you see, you can see. When we look at the image from the right edge, you see the front face, front side of the face. And when you see at the left extreme, you see, you see the person's left side of the face. When we try to cover the edge, you know, when we try to cover the edges, you see, when we cover from our right side, we see the left side of the face. When we cover the uh, left side, you see the front portion of the right side of the face. So the, these are certain perspectives that we can use to see different problems, to solve different problems. So uh, like you said, a new way of looking so that we are creative and we are also uh, right in a new way of looking at the challenges or any problem in order to solve it. So um, creativity is that uh, we know we can be creative. 
and we in order to think uh, uh, to solve a particular problem in a new way that we think uh, 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 that would be the solution okay or in different ways we creativity is about looking in from different angle looking from different angles so that we can come uh, come come to a solution okay? so there may be 10 different ways that we could look into and come with a solution but we need to be open enough at the end of the day we need to see to whether the problem is solved so let's look at another term word uh, that is let me change Okay, innovative. Innovative. So what do you think about innovative or being innovative? What does it mean and to be innovative? What does it mean for us to be innovative? So anyone from the class, what do you think according to this innovative? So innovative means to make changes to something that is already established. So now uh, this way we try to solve a problem. Let's say that it has already been established the way we know. Then we introduce a new method or a new idea. Or it can also be a new process that we try to uh, uh, solve it. Or it can also be a new product. Then that results in a new uh, innovative or the right way that we can uh, innovate a, a product that may help the advanced generation. So we need to be creative in our thinking in order to be innovative. So innovative is to make changes to something that is already established or it is on or by introducing how new methods, new ideas, and new products. So let's see uh, some of the pictures that uh, where the innovation took place in time through the science and technology that helped the uh, growing generation to adapt and uh, grow with it. So we can see that. How many of you all have seen this image before? And what is this? What do you think about the image, the product and the images? A telephone? It's a telephone. Yes, it is a phone. Uh, it is not a, a gramophone or something. It is a telephone. So which initially this was the type of phone which was used where, uh, where they had the handpiece separately from the earpiece, where, I mean, earpiece, and they used to communicate, used to use this instrument to communicate and later this uh, uh, the uh, the technology was so innovative they innovating to this phone. Now we have how many of us have come across this type phone wire dial phone how many has come across okay Rupa also has come across, even I have used it. So in my home, when the telephone came, this was the uh, first model, uh, uh, model phone that was introduced and they installed it and we were so uh, excited, you know, just to keep dialing, you know, you need to dial through uh, the end of each number. You know, I think uh, those days there were no cell phones, so it was only in India. It was a seven-digit telephone number that we had to use and to dial different states. Uh, you know, according to the state, we need to use codes. Uh, you know, it has some uh, state code. State code, like, uh, you know, for Bangalore, the 080 or Chennai 044 or Mumbai 022, Delhi 0. One, one, if I'm right, I'm not too sure. So some of the codes that was by hearted in our mind, so because of our relatives in different places, so we used to by heart the telephones. And uh, if I look back those days when we had these type of dial phones, our mind was so creative. Do you know why? Uh, yes, we did have a telephone diary at home where we used to write down everyone's numbers, but then more than 20 to uh, 30 numbers we stored in our mind. 
Did anyone have that experience? I've stolen telephone numbers, unique telephone numbers in our mind. The telephone directory was a mind. More than 30 numbers were stored in the mind. Despite the age, everyone knew the number because we need to look at the diary, dial it. You know, as you dial, automatically it gets stored. So your mind was actually creative enough to absorb it in the hard way through. Okay, and we also see some of the other modern phones, how the innovation took place. How many of you all have seen this type of phone? Uh, a little bit, okay, that was a bulky phone. No. This phone model was a little balconator, square, little heavy. And then this phone came to hang it on the wall. So that needs to be, this phone needs to be placed on a table but this model of phone can be hung on the wall as well as you dial the dial system is same okay but this model can be hung on the wall as well can be kept on a table and hung on wall and see the next innovation let me see that okay that's a okay um Okay, I think that's the last one I had in the slide. Okay, so what happened? After that, we see different, uh, the innovation took place from uh, these phones to a smaller one, lightweight one, just the dial keypad ones. And then um, later, you see, it's, we started with the mobile phones. Uh, uh, how many of you all remember the first model uh, phone that was launched in India? Yes, go ahead, Sita. Nokia, which model? Um, Initially, ma'am, those pages had come, and he then sub me right after pages they had those phones, but those were very heavy ones, Siemens, and uh, so I remember that heavy phone which used to be there. Yes, yes, yes. Let me show you this picture. I have one with me. Uh, yeah, heavy ones. The pages were there. Yes, I missed on the pages. Thanks, sub me for bringing that up, and. I'm just trying to bring this up, the picture. Okay, let me. Okay, just sharing. I'm just sharing all this to know how creative we are. It's, there's no reason for us to say that we are not creative because creativity is a gift. It is a gift that God has given each of us. So do you all remember these models? I'm not sure in other places in the world. Do you all remember any of these phones that you have used? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, most of them we are. Okay. Uh -huh. Or at least we would have seen our parents use such phones. In 1987, yeah, the, uh, these phones were very heavy. And then we have 1992, another model, 1994, another, 97, 98. Um, I remember my parents using the phones that is in 99 or 2000. You know, that was a 2000 model, Nokia. That was the one I remember my dad had it. And we all used to, you know, take turns to just have it in our hand to feel the phone and, you know, play with it. And there was one game in that. That was a snake game, uh, you know, continuously playing the same game again and again. Yeah, so you see how the creativity took, how there was an innovation in the model, keeping people in mind, keeping 
people in mind, there was always constant change, constant innovation. Now, who created this? Who came up with this innovation model? It's we people. So God has given each of us the mind to, to be thoughtful, to be creative, and to be innovative. And now, did it stop there? You see, uh, smartphones, uh, touch screen that came after that. Then, uh, uh, you know, it didn't stop with that. Then it came with the cameras, front and back cameras. And uh, when it came front and back to promote that type of phone, they came up with the selfie mode, you know, which was not very innovative. But then they came up with selfie. And now you see everyone, uh, you know, wanted that smartphone with that selfie thing. And now, they're trying to shrink it in such a small way like every watch has a phone has a hack system i call i don't have to bring a picture because that's the generation that we all are living in okay and now with the ai technology uh, it's going to be much more simple much more innovative you see this constant change this constant improvement this constant creativity so if a human mind is able to think and be creative in this one particular area, how much more creative you and I can be in the area of ministry that God has assigned each one of us to. So the one thing that we need to realize is we have placed our own limitation over ourselves. We need to remove that limitation for us to be creative in the area that God has called us to be. We have technology, we have tools, we have resources. We need to tap into it. We need to ask God, God, you are the creator. You are the source of all wisdom. And I need a new creativity in my ministry, in my workplace. Give me, uh, you, you give me the new ideas that I can implement it. When you ask, when you seek God continually, till you receive it, you see, God gives it to you. He has raised you as a leader, not by chance. He is a God who is leading us. The God who instructed Moses that he has given this wisdom, given this creativity to Bezalel, the same God who has raised you and I in this area, in this medium, he will, be, he will give us the creativity that is needed. He will make us, uh, you know, he'll give us the creative for us to innovate new things in the area of ministry, wherever we serve him. He will make us a blessing. Simple as that. You know, this past week I'm studying on John 15. So much of revelation from that one scripture. You see, the, that, that passage that talks about the relationship between the wine and the branch. You know, it clearly says that you cannot do anything without me. Verse 7, it says you cannot do anything without me. And with me, you will be fruitful. So very simple. For us to do the impossible things, possible. For us to make the supernatural things natural. For us to be fruitful in every area. Where God has placed us, it may, it may be in a marketplace, workplace, or in the ministry. Let's not complain and say, Lord, it's too difficult. This is not my cup of tea. I can't do this. But then God is saying, ask me. Abide in me. Partner with me. And I will make you fruitful. I will make you creative. I will give you every innovative idea that you need. So this is something, friends, that we need to ask God, that God, as I abide in you, make me more creative, make me more innovative, because God is the source of all wisdom, and we can tap into that wisdom. We have the access to this wisdom because we abide in him and he's abiding in us. The God of creativity is abiding in us. So he will make us creative in every area that we so let's be, uh, believe that the creative God is in us. Uh, the scripture also says that you shall have whatever you believe. So we need to believe, we need to renew our mind that we are creative, we are innovative. Let not age put a stop on each of us. We are growing strong, 
day by day. We are growing young. We are growing creative when we are in him. We are in him. So that's what I would like to share from this class of being creative and innovative, that we are creative. Uh, despite our age, we are creative because we are abiding in him and he in us. Okay, with that, I would like to open up to the class that you would like to share, like how God helped you to be creative in your workplace, in your ministry, when you depended, depended on him. Anyone from the class would like to share. Elisha, Tarsha, Maxine, anyone from the class, even if I've not called your name, you can just unmute and share how God helped you, how God gave you this creative thought to help handle a situation, or how He gave you a creative thought to, uh, you know, a creative product. It can be anything that God helped you. You got this wisdom literally from God. Ma'am, I'll share something, yes, but you please. may laugh at it. That's okay. Uh, this is something uh, I received from God. When I got married, I realized that uh, my husband liked very good food. And he was not happy with any uh, anything our cook used to make. So I was in the beginning, I was very uh, fearful because I was not very good at it. I know cooking, but not to the extent, not an expert at it. But when I started praying about it, God used to give me ideas about recipes. And those recipes have worked out so well. Many people, they come in so good. But I always give credit to God because he had taught me every simple thing. Uh, there were so many new things god has taught me so not only in uh, cooking and everything in ministry giving me new ideas with the children with the youth how to reach out to them how to uh, draw their attention when we preach or teach there's so many things god uh, keeps on when we look on to him the the helper in us father please help me holy spirit god i don't know how to reach out these people how to make that impact. God immediately give a, a very beautiful idea so that. Yes, yes. We are not able to hear you, Sister Rupa. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else in the class would like to share? Mangi? Prabhakar? Nisha? Harrison? You can just share how Lord helped you to be creative, to be innovative in the place where you are. Just to let us know that we all are creative, that God imparts his wisdom, imparts his creativity in us despite the area that we are in. He is interested not just in ministry, he's just interested in us and our personal things at home and handling a family, a workplace, ministry. Anyone would like to share? Subhajit, Siddhant, anyone from the class, just unmute and share how Lord, uh, we have two students here, Kung and Asha, very creative. They are very creative in many things at the college, proactively taking up the initiatives and, you know, they do everything very well. And we also have Apinas and Siddhant here, great help. They are very creative and innovative, been of a great help to me in handling many tasks at our college. They are, seem to be very silent today. Uh, I, I'm not too sure why they're not unmuting to share some of the experience, but they come across uh, their ministry, the area that they save in. But I would like to tell you that they are very creative. So just like them, I'm sure each of us in our class are very creative. Because we are abiding in him. Yes, Avni, please go ahead. So, ma'am, uh, this is about like when uh, I 
started teaching the Sunday school children in Delhi. So yes. we had a few bunch of children. Very, uh, we had a small church, and I was teaching these children. So uh, I had just uh, resigned from my teaching job and come to Delhi. Uh, I was in Dubai before, so there we were taught a lot of ideas of touching these lives, young children. I was a primary teacher there. And there were some very innovative ideas that we had learned. So we were being trained for that, how to you know, make learning happen and how children can learn well when we use such ideas, not just give a lecture or just teach them stories. So when I came back, these were these children who were, who were church children. But then uh, I started using those ideas in the Sunday school of using puppets, of using some uh, innovative ideas of you know teaching children to put up short skates and many other ways doing crafts and uh, doing some activities so uh, within six months we see that we saw that from 30 it came to 60 children and these children started coming one by one and these were mostly from slum areas mm -hmm. they would only come for sunday school because they enjoyed the class and i used to uh, thank god because i was uh, trained and being paid to be trained as a teacher mm -hmm. But God helped me use those ideas for these uh, small 60, 70 children uh, were very regular. And they would enjoy the stories. They would enjoy those uh, lessons on the Bible uh, being implemented in the children's church. And uh, we saw that immense growth. And then at a point of time on Christmas time, we, uh, you know, we made a, we had a small fit. We didn't have a place. We had a small roof probably where we had a small fit where these children they created things with their own hands and they, you know, put up a stall like 10 mm -hmm. rupees for bookmarks for fridge magnets. They would make 20 rupees for a fridge magnet and they had these uh, things sold out and, you know, out of uh, hardly 100 people. We, we collected some, raised up some funds for our Sunday school for these children to be, you know, used for their uh, material resources to give them home. So we used these ideas in the children's church and these lives were greatly blessed and they learned so many things like everything we used to do with hands and not buy things from outside uh, to decorate the church to, you know, send them uh, these uh, materials with children with the messages on it, with verses on it. And we would do that in the Sunday school. So that's what I wanted to share. So it blessed me a lot because I learned so much. And this helped children get so much interested that they would come early to the children's church and sit and wait what is happening today. So I've enjoyed that blessing. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Havni, for sharing your experience, what you had at Delhi. But then, class, I want to let you know that Havni just didn't stop uh, Sunday school or uh, teaching or imparting the knowledge that she gained to the children in Delhi. But She's continuing to be a blessing to the children, even at a, a central, um, APC central, that is the main church of APC in Bangalore. She comes very far, though she stays very far, she comes week after week and be a blessing to the uh, children, children's church in Bangalore. Thank you, Agni, for the heart that you serve week after week and being a blessing to the children. And class, yes, one thing I, I would like to leave the class with, the scripture was Mark 9, 23, which talks about if um, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So if we, each of us in the class, believe that we are creative and we are innovative, great, the creative God could do greater things in and through us. We need to renew our mind and believe in our heart that we are creative, we are innovative. Despite our age, despite our circumstances, despite the place where we are, you may be in the workplace, so you don't have to think, what can God have to do in the workplace? But what the scripture says, God will make you fruitful in the place where you are. So each of us, from the place where we are, when we call upon the creative God, he's going to do greater things in and through us. So just that we should not limit God to what he can do through us. Okay, so with that, I will leave you all and I would request one of us from a class to 
end the session with a word of prayer. And next class, we will look into the critical thinking side. Can I request one of you to unmute and pray? Can I pray more? Yes, I may. Thank you, ma'am. Father God, we are so very thankful to you for we know, Lord, you created this world and all creativity, source of all creation and creativity comes from you. And as we are tapped into your spirit, Father, you have given us that spirit in us. And Lord, in this time when we are learning about how to be creative and how to be a blessing to the people around us, to the ministries that we have, Father, we ask you to... Fill us with that wisdom and that creativity in us, Father, which would touch lives in different ways. And uh, Lord, Father, may your name be glorified through our life. May your name be exalted in our lives and through our lives, Father. And uh, through the area of influence, wherever you have kept us, Father, yes. be it in just in homes, Lord, even when we are cooking food or we are, uh, Lord, serving people, we may be creative in our ideas that would bless others and yes. bring glory to your name only, Abba Father. Each of us, Father, we surrender our will to you, Father, knowing that you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge and understanding and creativity, Abba Father. We continue to look up to you for more ideas, for more of your, uh, Lord Father, creative skills to be blessed in us and given to us so that we may use them to glorify you in every possible way once again we thank you for the lesson we read thank you for a pastor who taught us with so much of grace and wisdom we thank you for anointing her and blessing um, making a blessing uh, to us through her father we thank you for everything we give you glory honor and praise for who you are and how you lead us in Jesus' name we ask and we pray amen thank you Thank you, each one, for joining this session. God bless. We will meet you all in the next class. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. God bless.